Hi, this is Rev Ed with today's Back Porch Devotional from Psalm 75. We give thanks to you, O God. We give thanks for your name is near. We recount your wondrous deeds. At the set time that I appoint, I will judge with equity. When the earth totters and all its inhabitants, it is I who keep steady its pillars. I say to the boastful, do not boast, and to the wicked, do not lift up your horn. Do not lift up your horn on high or speak with haughty neck. For not from the east or from the west and not from the wilderness comes lifting up. But it is God who executes judgment, putting down one and lifting up another. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup with foaming wine, well mixed, and he pours from it. And all the wicked of the earth shall drain it down to the dregs. But I will declare it forever. I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. All the horns of the wicked I will cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be lifted up. The psalmist is giving thanks to God for who he is and for all the wonderful things that he has done. And he sums all that up in the phrase, your name is near. The name of God represents the character, the essence, the true personhood of God. You'll remember when Moses was speaking to God at the burning bush, or rather God was speaking to him. And Moses asked, who shall I say is sending me? And God said, I am who I am. That's the four letter Hebrew word that we pronounce as Yahweh. It is a sign of the essential being of God. And we recognize that essential being as we observe all the things that God has done, from the glory of the natural world and all creation to the things that he has done throughout history for his people. We remember and recount these things as a way of reminding us who God is. The acts of God reveal the character of God, and this is why we can give him thanks and why we can praise him. And then in verses three through five, God himself speaks. At the set time that I appoint, I will judge with equity. When the earth totters and all its inhabitants, it is I who keeps steady its pillars. And I say to the boastful, do not boast, and to the wicked, do not lift up your horn. God is saying, when the time is right, I will execute judgment. You know, we look at the world in all of its misery and all the conflict and all the evil around us, and we wonder, when is the time going to be right? But you'll remember from one of Peter's letters, he said that God is not slow as some count slowness, but he is patient, not wanting any to perish, but desiring that all should turn and come to the knowledge of God. God is giving people time to repent. And our impatience reflects our lack of understanding of what God is all about. So many people have the wrong image of God, that he is this vengeful dictator who's always seeking to destroy people's fun and to smack people with lightning bolts when they do wrong when actually god is far more merciful and loving and generous with us than we deserve but there is a time coming god says where i will judge with equity the earth will not shake until i say it'll shake and then when he says to the boastful and to the wicked do not lift up your horn the horns of an ox are a symbol of its power. And the word horn is often used in the Old Testament in particular as a, a reference point for the power of something, power and might. And so when he says, do not lift up your horn, when you think about it, when they put a yoke on an ox, if he lifts his head up, the yoke will not go around his head and the horns get in the way. To lift the horns up, is a sign of pride and arrogance and rebellion. And God is saying, you know what? You keep that up and I'm gonna cut those horns off. He says that the horns of the righteous shall be lifted up. See, it's not the righteous who lift them up, but God himself who lifts up the righteous. The wicked are those who rebel against God, who lift up their horns against his yoke, who resist the way that he wants to lead them. And all God can say to them is one of these days, your time is coming. And what he says to us is be patient. We remember the wondrous deeds of God. We remember how he has executed judgment in the past. And we remember 
with gratitude that the judgment that should have fallen on us fell on our Savior, Jesus Christ, which is why when the great day of judgment does come, in spite of our sinfulness, we will be spared, not because we're innately good somehow or that we've crossed this threshold of goodness that allows us to stand in God's presence, but rather because we have been clothed with the righteousness of Christ, which is ours through faith. But this psalm celebrates the fact that the wicked will be thrown down and the righteous will be lifted up. There is an order to the universe and God is behind it all. And one day it will be revealed. It brings to mind the words of Mary after she visited her cousin Elizabeth, when she said, and this is from the first chapter of Luke, these familiar words, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant for behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his offspring forever. The righteous judge of all the earth will do right. And we can wait patiently knowing that that great day is coming. We can act with humility and with righteousness because we know that these are the things that will be lifted up when that day comes. We can endure because we have the strength that is poured out on us through the Holy Spirit, which is ours through faith in Christ. We can recount the wonderful deeds of the Lord as we give thanks for his mercy and grace and all his goodness to us. God's blessings be upon you this day.